also been growing different tomatoes, uh, potatoes, sorry. <laughs> then we've got um, two that are from our most recent selection of seed from the potatoes. So we grow, they're from true seed rather than what we call a seed potato, which is what you buy when you're planting potatoes. These are from the actual seed from the fruit of potatoes themselves. In these two pots, we've got some um, varieties that we bought in. So we've got some Ambo, some Alouette, uh, I think some Lady Balfour. You can see here, the plants are just starting to succumb a bit. Whereas these are some varieties that we've bred. Um, I think this is maybe our third or fourth year of growing these. Um, we've given them some really exciting names. This one here is A, this one's J, and this one's D. But you can see how green and lush and um, you know barely any sign of disease on them at all. So we, we grow these in our vegetable garden as well, um, next to all the other varieties. And even when other more susceptible varieties have succumbed to blight, even though these are grown right next to them, they're still looking really, really healthy. Um, and they've given us some great crops. We selected them as well for flavor. Um, so we know that they taste really good, um, just the way that we like them. So they produce quite large pink potatoes. And there's uh, three really fantastic varieties that we've been growing here um, in a, you know, an organic system. So it's really important to have that disease resistance. I'm just sorting out our seed potatoes. We have bred our own varieties of um, potatoes. We've bred our own to be disease resistant, more blight resistant. And obviously these aren't available in the shops. So in order to grow these every year, we've had to start growing our own seed potatoes. So this variety um, is, these are the seed potatoes for this variety here, we called it J. You can see they're a lot smaller, so we've, we planted about 10 seed potatoes into one of these pots. Uh, and then obviously we've grown a lot of smaller potatoes growing in these pots, rather than the, when we plant them out to grow them on for eating, we plant them out in the vegetable garden, um, you know, quite far apart, so there's plenty of space and we get bigger tubers. So these are the seed potatoes. When we were developing our own varieties, when we were breeding our own varieties, we gathered up some fruit. So we grew, uh, initially we grew 10 of the most disease resistant potatoes um, that we could find to grow well in this area. So these then all were open pollinated and then we gathered some fruits. So these are the potato fruits um, and inside, I'm not sure if you can see, but inside here, the fruits, there are these seeds. So we grew these, these are called true potato seed. So we took some of these fruits, we put them, uh, mashed them up and put them in some water and then you leave them to uh, ferment, go really mushy and smelly and horrible. Um, and then uh, once they're really sort of horrible and, and really um, uh, fermented, you can then add this mixture to um, a lot more water and uh, the seeds, you, you give it a good mix and the seeds will sink and the mushy stuff will float and you can skim that off the top and you can keep repeating that process uh, until you've got a fairly clean batch of seed which you can then pour the water, remaining water with the seeds in through a sieve and collect the seeds. Here I've cut one of the fruits in half, just so you can see these are the seeds here, these individual seeds inside the fruits themselves. And these are what we used to grow our potatoes in our trial. So once we've processed the seed, we then dry it and store it through the winter um, and sow it in spring, just as you would tomato seeds. Uh, then we prick them out, we put 10 into these one litre pots, 10 seedlings. Um, we pot those into a mixture of compost, 50% compost, 50% soil from the vegetable garden. And that is so we can introduce 
uh, any diseases um, that might be in the soil in the vegetable garden and this helps to screen for plants which will coat well in our soil up in the vegetable garden. Um, so as we, we grow those we can fit 15 pots in here in a crate so within just this small crate we can be growing about 150 seedlings on to see how they do. Um, and as we are growing them on, we keep um, screening them, looking at them, so any plants that show any signs of disease, um, we can pull those out so they never actually form tubers. And uh, we grow them, you know, in these, it might seem a lot of plants in, in one pot, but that can sort of put the plant under stress and um, we really wanting to grow strong plants which will grow under stressful conditions. We don't want to just grow things that are going to grow in really nice mollycoddled perfect compost because that's not the conditions that we have here. So we stress them out and we screen for disease resistance on the leaves. Um, we also took when we were growing on um, these ones here we took some leaves from some other uh, plants which had developed blight so we took those leaves scrunched them up put them on the pots so it's introducing blight to the plants so then any plants that succumb to blight and um, we can pull those out as well and screen for blight that's a really easy way to screen for blight then at the end of the year we end up with these um, what we call microtubers so this is just the kind of thing that we started with when we were breeding these ones and so then you can screen once you've you've harvested these microtubers you can then screen those to see if there's anything uh, like scab or any rots or anything like that so you know that's another level of screening that you do and then we simply um, plant these out and grow them on to trial those for the following year. These are some different varieties which I have emptied out of the pots this morning. We started saving seeds, uh, seed potatoes of our own varieties, but actually we found that some of the uh, some of our favourite varieties that we order in from different companies, some of them were coming looking um, really scabby and horrible, and some were coming completely different variety to what it should have been. So we've started saving our own uh, seed potatoes of different varieties as well. And now I'm just going to empty out this pot here. This is um, our variety we called A. So I'm just going to empty out this pot and collect the seed potatoes. So I've finished harvesting our seed potatoes for our variety A, um, which are looking pretty good. I'm quite pleased with those. So the main things to remember when saving your own seed potatoes are to keep an eye out for any signs of disease. Uh, at the first sign of any blight on the leaves, um, it's best to cut the plants, all of the foliage, right off to uh, prevent any chance of blight getting into the tubers themselves because then obviously you can't, they would rot and you can't, um, you wouldn't have anything to plant out the following year. And uh, also for things like um, aphid attack, and any signs of viruses because they can even if the um, potato uh, didn't rot due to viruses that would then be carried over and would be present in following year's crop so you know if you buy your certified uh, disease-free seed potatoes they're usually um, grown up in Scotland because uh, things like blight and um, aphids tend to get there later so just to be really vigilant and uh, you know we've we've had some really great crops from our, our own varieties this year um, and I think that's partly because uh, you know we've been really vigilant when growing the seed potatoes keeping an eye on them all the time checking for any signs of blight uh, or, or anything like that so uh, if you follow all of those um, you should be able to grow your own um, seed potatoes for storing um, varieties from one year to the next.